Hey everybody, it's good to see you my friends. Welcome to lesson two in our study of the book of Exodus, lesson number two. You remember from last time when we study together, we do four things. First, we read because we first want to hear what God wants us to hear from him. Second, we pray. We thank God for his word and we ask for wisdom as we read it and try to understand it. Third, we think about it. We think about what we read and see what we can understand and what applications we can draw. And finally, we pray again, asking for God's blessing on our lives as we seek to apply what we learned. Read, pray, think, and pray. Okay, if you're ready, we're going to read. We'll pick up in Exodus chapter 2, starting in verse 11. One day, when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. When he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together. And he said to the man in the wrong, Why do you strike your companion? He answered, Who made you a prince and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. When they came home to their father, Reuel, he said, how is it that you have come home so soon today? They said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and even drew water for us and watered the flock. And he said to his daughters, Then where is he? Why have you left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah. She gave birth to a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. During those many days, the king of Egypt died, and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God, and God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. Chapter 3. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful to you for your word. We're thankful for the book of Exodus and what we can learn about the lives of the Israelites and the life of your servant Moses. Pray for wisdom as we study, and we pray for help in making good application. To the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. All right, my friends. So you remember from last time that the Israelites have grown into a large number of people and they're now slaves in Egypt. And mean old King Pharaoh said that all the baby boys born to the Hebrews would be killed. But Moses' parents resisted and they hid Moses and saved him. And Pharaoh's daughter found Moses, and she adopted him and raised him in the palace as her own son. 
So that's what we learned about last time. Now here, in kind of the middle of chapter 2, we see that Moses has grown up. We know from the New Testament in the book of Acts that Moses is about 40 years old when this happens. We don't know all the details, but we know that, at least this, that Moses understood, and somehow and in some way, that he was also an Israelite. And he decided at that point in his life to stand with the Israelites instead of stay with the Egyptians. Now, this is a really big deal. I know that Moses is a grown man. He's 40 years old. But, but think about what he's doing. He is deciding to stand with slaves instead of remain in the palace with royalty. That's a really big deal. So what does Moses do? Well, we see that Moses sees one of his fellow Hebrews being hurt by an Egyptian, and Moses attacks the Egyptian. Now, again, we don't know all the details of how it went down or what Moses was intending or thinking, um, but we do know, again, from the book of Acts, that Moses believed that God was saving Israel through him. So not just th this one Israelite that Moses was saving, but that he had an idea or a hope that God would deliver the Israelites through him. Perhaps he was thinking, well, this taskmaster is too rough or he's unfair. I'm going to teach him a lesson and I'll save my people from him. Or, or maybe he was thinking more broadly. He was thinking, I'm, I'm the son of Pharaoh. I'll lead the Israelites and with God's help, we'll stand up to the Egyptians and we'll win our freedom. We don't know exactly what he was thinking, um, but we do know that what Moses was doing here did not lead to the freedom of the Israelites. That was not God's plan. Moses kills somebody. He hides the body. And the Israelites, instead of following him, they don't respect him at all. They don't listen to him. Moses is afraid. He runs for his life. He hides in the wilderness. And then by the time we get to chapter 3, where there's a burning bush, we learn, again from the book of Acts, that Moses is 80 years old. So he's been hiding for 40 years. And we'll see as we go on in Exodus chapter 3, by this point, Moses is in many ways a broken man, and he is afraid. Um, so he has gone from the prince of Egypt, right, from royalty, perhaps dreaming and thinking that God will do great things through him, that he can serve God in great things, in great ways. And he's gone from that to now living out his life in the wilderness as a simple shepherd, as an old man, hiding from the mistakes of his past. Now, while all that's going on with Moses, the rest of the nation of Israel remains enslaved in Egypt. They're suffering and they're begging God for mercy. But what's so amazing here in chapter 2 is we read at the end of chapter 2 that God saw what was going on and God knew about it. God saw what was happening to the Israelites. God saw what was happening to Moses. And he appeared to Moses. And so that's the lesson that I want us to remember from today's, today's reading. And that's this, that God always remembers his people. God always remembers his people. Now, that can apply to a group of people as a whole. So it applied to the nation of Israel. God remembered them as they were slaves and the pain and suffering that they were in. That applies to the church as a whole today, too, that God remembers us. He saw us when we were suffering as slaves to sin, and he was merciful to us. I mean, that's all we are as a church, right? We're people who God saw when we were slaves to sin, and now we're people that God has had mercy on and he's delivered us from that slavery. So God always remembers and sees. And that doesn't just apply to a group, that also applies to individual people because we see in these passages here that God also saw Moses. He saw the ups and downs of his life and he remembered him 
and he appeared to him there in the wilderness. And in the same way, God sees you and God sees me. He sees us when we're scared. He sees us when we're ashamed of things that we've done that are wrong or of mistakes that we've made. And he is willing to have mercy on us. And what a wonderful thought that is, that no matter what is going on in our life and what's going on in this world, that God is always watching, that he sees and that he knows and that he'll do something about it. Now, exactly what God will do about it, that is what we're going to see in Lesson 3 as we get on in the next part of Exodus. But for now, let's have a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful that you loved your people, the Israelites, that you saw them in their suffering and you remembered them, that you showed love for your servant Moses, that you saw him and that you remembered him and that you appeared to him. We're so thankful for that encouragement, Lord, and we're so thankful because we know by faith that you see us and remember us, and we ask for your help that we can be pleasing to you, and that as you show us mercy, that we can show mercy to others, and we can live a life that is glorifying to you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Just like last time, if you could, please draw something about today's lesson. So maybe you want to draw a picture of Moses, 40 years old, going out to see his fellow Hebrews, uh, or maybe Moses delivering somebody from the, the Egyptian. Perhaps you want to draw a picture of the children of Israel crying out to God for help while they're slaves. Maybe Moses running into the wilderness and hiding as an old man, or even perhaps him seeing the burning bush and God calling out to Moses from the burning bush. Uh, if you do draw something, have your parents take a picture, post it in the comments below. It's wonderful to see what everybody draws as they go through this lesson. All right, I sure miss you, and I'll be excited to see you next time. Take care.